afternoon, uh, very good afternoon, all of you. Uh, my name is Rahul Tyagi. Uh, I'm grown up, brought up in Punjab, in a small village known as uh, Gurdaspur. Anybody heard about that? It's, it's on Google Map, don't worry. And uh, it's from last seven to eight years, I think I have dedicated my life in a field known as cybersecurity. And if you know, our Prime Minister is talking about digital India and the security concerns the country has to take care of. So we are f like the breed of uh, geeks who work 24 into 7 on computers, doesn't listen to anyone. The first and only love is computer. <laughs> Second is the human being for sure, because we take care of them after when we stop any cyber crime or we stop anyone to get harassed on the internet and so on. Today's my talk is something, a special talk, is known as the underground cyber crimes in 2017, what they will never want to talk about. So what are the things which they don't want to talk about? Of course, good and bad. So let me start. With the thing, hackers are changing. So let me take you to, I think, in 1987, majority of you, I think, was not born that time. So, so at that time, you know, world's first private computer, or you can say world's first personal computing malware was designed and start infecting the world like never before. The virus name was Brain.A. Do you remember the floppy, floppy disk? Okay, so they infected that, and when you plug the floppy drive in your computer, it is going to infect your computer. That was the first personal computer virus ever been mired and encountered. It was designed by two brothers, Basit and Amjad, from Pakistan. And uh, they were so confident that if you try to, try to open, open the source code of the malware, you can actually see the address and the phone number. And if you have any problem, they said, please call our phone number. We'll fix it for you, you know. So that was the first computer, malware. So, but it's not like that today. Today, there are more, or more organized criminal gangs who are working 24 into 7 to get your bank account data, get your personal Facebook chat, which is quite a deal, right? <laughs> Nobody wants to give that. Now, that's the problem we have. So we have entered into digital 2.0 era. And what is digital 2.0? Five to six years back, what was the internet for you? The internet was? Go to YouTube, go to Mr. something XYZ, today, we go to Mr. Bhunbam, and there are a lot of things, you know, you do. Now, moreover that, in today's age, after five years, moreover internet and technology we are, being, we, are, we are using is more connected to the finance, to the money. When you go out of home, you book Uber or Ola, money involved? In, in, instead, you have coupon, you know. <laughs> Most of the money involved. Now, the more money is going to be involved into digital age, the more criminals are going to be interested. And that is where the problem is. And that's what we are addressing in Lucidus. From last five years, a company with having 110 minds, hardcore hackers, more capable than me, trust me, I'm the least one there. So, very good mind, I own an average age of 21, 23, sitting 24 into 7 into their computers, day and night, and they try to hack into the things. Not too bad, well, not for the bad purposes. So companies hire us to hack into their system legally with their permission, and we tell them what's the problem. Today we have state-sponsored hacks. State-sponsored hack I will talk about in the latest slide. It's something which is governed by the governments, governed by the cyber terrorist groups in an organized way. It's not a kid, 19 years of kid who's sitting at his home in the dark and trying to hack into your personal chat or something. They are really organized, really professional. And the biggest problem which we are seeing right now, this is the first time in technology era, criminals are now more investing their money into research before applying the attack in the audience, which was never happened before. Now this is a matter of concern. 
So it's just like, you know, they want to test their attack before launching the attack, whether it will be successful or not. If it is not going to be successful, as per the, in the, as per the market scenario, they will not launch it. Think like a startup, you know, they want to launch a product. <laughs> they see there is no crowd, okay, don't launch the product then. And that's the same thing they are doing. Now, so from where these organized criminals are going, coming up, and um, why it's very difficult to trace them back, so this is known as the deep web. Now deep web is a part of the world wide web which traditionally doesn't come on Google searches and other search engines. It's a hidden internet. If you think Google shows everything to you, Google only shows you 0.04% of the entire internet which actually exists. Quite a deal. If you don't believe me, Google it. <laughs> now, when you have this kind of stats, then definitely, where is the other internet? That internet is known as the deep web, dark internet, hidden internet. Because of the anonymity of this internet, there are a lot of criminals also inside it, whistleblowers who want to reveal something against the government and against other agencies. They register to this website and publish the material because there is no tracing of this thing. You can have actually the real drugs. There are organized criminal gangs who are selling drugs there, sometimes cash on delivery also. In US and other countries, it's going like massive scale in US. Then we have weapon assassin killers. And obviously, we are humans, we say, whoa, is it real? Yes, it's real. And these people have a little bit of ethics also. For example, if you bought a drug from a website and the quality was not good, you can report abuse also. <laughs> and they will shut it down, that vendor. They will not sell the good, bad drugs for you. Now, that is something which was, it's like an e-commerce of criminals, e-commerce of the bad people. So online harassment and money extraction in 2017. So I'll give you a case study, which we recently busted a case of a company's one of the very big employer, web.whatsapp scam. I hope you know about web.whatsapp. It's a service which is given by the WhatsApp when you don't want to use your mobile phone, you're in office or your home, you want to chat on your desktop. So you open the website, scan the QR code, and you start talking to the people. Now, <clears throat> in this scam, what happened? There was a person who was actually a big company, is very big, I will not name the, name the company for sure, it's a very big company and the guy was a, at a very big uh, position there. So at the age of 65, you know, he was I think out of country, having good time and it was 1 a.m. in the morning, he was not feeling sleepy. So he opened certain websites, you know, something. So when he opened something and in the right hand side there are a lot of pop-ups on those web websites, you know, kind of pop-ups and there's a beautiful girl shouting like anything with a kind of, you know, with a glitters and all, <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> How you want to talk to her? They said, okay, these are five steps you can talk to me right now. First, open your webcam, oh, sorry, open your uh, WhatsApp and there's a QR code, scan this QR code and start ch chatting with me. 1 a.m., you know. <laughs> so he said, okay, and he scanned it. Nothing happened, he's waiting for the message, hi, <laughs> no message. And after some time, he got a, another message on his, as, as a SMS, as a flash message, I have your chat. Now, traditionally, we know if I scan web.whatsapp, the chat will go to your desktop, right? It will not go to somewhere else. But the criminals are having this scam nowadays. If you see a QR code and you scan with it, it's possible to get your chat anywhere else in the world and then they will blackmail you. So now, let me show you that how this attack was done practically. So we're going to hack into someone's WhatsApp here, if you allow me. So it's an application which basically can make uh, some phishing pages and it's like you can make uh, fake pages of chat applications, uh, mailing services, e-commerce website, passport services, you know, mostly used by criminals to trick people to enter the crit critical information like social security ID in the US and Aadhaar card information in India. So it's more, moreover, it's not the problem with the technology, it's with the people, you know. You can fix any technology, but there is no patch of human stupidity. And that's what hackers intrigue. So I'll quickly come to WhatsApp and I'll make a port number. So this kind of technical jargon, so you don't have to go inside it, but now you will observe automatically there is a link will come up. So now we are going to see as he is going to scan this code, if it works perfectly, 
We are going to see his entire chat here in front of you. And hopefully we are going to get. So he, I sent him a code and he scanned it. And after some time, we are going to get. I know you are curious about it. <laughs> I feel you are the hacker now. <laughs> Trying to reach the phone. Come on. Let's try again. Okay, so we got his entire chat. So we can see his old, I'm sorry if you have some personal messages. So, so now that is a problem, you know, that is a really a problem. You guys know that web.whatsapp.chat cannot, you cannot, you should not scan, but a person who is 45 or is not into that technology, it's very easy to trick him. And these days, hackers are targeting the companies and the crowds there and the big people in the organization who can be a part of this scam. Cyber espionage. Now this is a new term when you hire cyber criminals in the deep web to shut down your rivals. So this is a screenshot of a real criminal website from the deep web. So this is kind of an attack where we send too much hello to a server than the capacity of that server. For example, if a server is ready to handle 10,000 people, if you send them 20,000 people, they cannot handle that request. And it will stop saying that I cannot, uh, the page cannot be displayed. As per your budget, you can start the attack. And they are going to attack it, you just have to pay through bitcoins. And you can shut down the website. If the website is shut down, customer can go to the website. Customer can't go to the website, damage to the business. Nothing is going to be sell. This is the real scenario today, cyber espionage. So Tuesday, uh, 7 March 2017, this is the first thing which was happened. And it, it, I think it is uh, one of the biggest uh, leaked ever done by WikiLeaks. What they leaked is this. WikiLeaks released a new series of leaks on Central Intelligence Agency of America, CIA, with the name of Vault 7. And this is a screenshot of uh, my friend's website, Mr. Mohit Kumar, the Hacker News. I didn't give the credit to him, so maybe in the video I will. So WikiLeaks exposed CIA's hacking tool. 8,200 documentations was there, tools, which are for the offense and for the defense purposes. The tools which can hack remotely anyone on the planet without even touching their computer or the mobile phone. Is a thing known as Eternal Blue. This demo, this, this malware was designed or this exploit was designed by the CIA and it's right now in the public domain. I'm going to hack. So for example, you are sitting into a coffee shop, you're a very powerful person and there's a per hacker who's sitting right now on the same network, like you're in the computer. If you're using Windows 7, I'm into your network. I don't have to touch your computer. I can get into your machine and steal everything. I can own your webcam. I can see what are you doing. And if you're thinking about, oh, there is a light, we can shut down the light remotely. You never know if someone is watching you or not. That's why I always have tape on my camera. You never know. <laughs> so they named this exploit as Eternal Blue. The capability of this exploit was, if again, you're sitting there, I'm sitting here, I, without touching you, no matter what antivirus you have, no matter what security solution you have, with some little bit of uh, editing in the exploit to make it fully undetectable, we can get into your machine. And then it's all ours. So, and now I have to type exploit. As I'm going to type exploit here, you will see something is happening. So my attack is going to that computer and the only thing which I need to access from that computer is the command prompt. If I get your command prompt right now, what will happen? I can do many commands. Now you see that there is a thing known as one metaprater session has been opened. That means I have gained the access of that machine without touching. And if you see the machine, it's working perfectly fine. No pop-up, nothing is there. And now I want to take a screenshot out of that. So the only thing I will do is screenshot, press enter. And now it says your screenshot is now into this directory. So let me see and go there. So can you see that? So I can actually get the screenshot of your computer remotely into my computer that what you're doing at time. Webcam, I can record your audio, I can record the video also. People, we have to aware them. Like how many sessions of security you have in one year? It's very easy to hack into the account, your accountant in your university. 
because he is do not know, but he carry the most sensitive information. If I am able to hack him, I have the backbone, financial backbone of yours. And that's what is the problem. People are not, we are not paying, the boardroom members, the companies are not paying that much amount to the people part. They think if we have the firewall, we have the antivirus, we have the, all the solution, the work is done. It is the first step when you really want to secure yourself. In the last, I would like to end my talk by saying this, that every Indian wants to make this country a digital India. And uh, what I believe that if we really want to have a true solution, true solution, I'm talking about a really true solution, then in the country of more than 1.35 billion people, every citizen in India has to happen and has to know a little bit about cyber security. Until and unless this is not going to happen, we cannot achieve the goal and the successful goal of transforming digital India into a secure digital India, which I feel is the need of the hour. And that is quite possible. Thank you so much.